my, my, my. God is good. It's such refreshing when you have a cool drink. Just refreshing. And I'm hoping what I bring to you today will be refreshing to you. I hope it's like a cold glass of water to your soul, to your spirit, to your mind. In Jesus' name. Good morning or good day. I want to pray. Heavenly Father, I ask right now, Lord Jesus. Let your spirit be rest upon me, Father God. And have me have give me the ability, Father God, to speak the word that you will call me to speak today, Father God. I pray, Father God, that every person that hears this, Father God, will be encouraged, Father God. They will be ignited, Father God, with your hope, Father God. That it is going to be a brighter day tomorrow. Today it's not just over. It's not over yet. Father God, let my words speak life. The life that you want to speak, oh God. Use me as a willing vessel, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that there will be ears to hear and the hearts to receive what you have to say today. We give you all the glory and all the, and all the praise, Lord. Thank you so much for all the love that you've given me. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, you know, it's been a while since I, since I posted uh, a message and uh, I guess we made up for that because you know God has done so many amazing things in my life even from the beginning of this year um, you know when I was telling you about the, the first washing at the church Chosen Vessels uh, it is amazing my life has never has not stopped since that day after my feet my feet were washed um, I mean I've been on fire in a way that I have never known before you know, and my relationship with Jesus has totally changed. Now, at the age of 53, at the age of 53, I finally realized for my own life, my purpose, what God had designed and planned for me in this world for this time. And that's an amazing place to be in a reality that you that you receive no, no, from no one else other than the Holy Spirit. So t this morning, t this morning was unusual for me because I woke up this morning with, some, with a word in my heart. Have you ever woken up? And God is saying something to you, and you're like, oh man, I was in the shower, like, oh my God, and he was just downloading it, and I was sitting there just, 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 you know, preaching and talking and sharing and getting me excited, and then my spirit was like, hey, you haven't posted in a while, why don't you go sit in front of the camera and let me speak, so that's what I'm doing today, brothers, I'm doing this for you, I'm doing this because this has been on my heart. Since I can remember, um, I know the life that I live, and some of y'all might know about the testimony. But you know what? I thought that my purpose for being was to share that per that testimony. That testimony was coming through a life of conversion. I thought that was the answer. You know, that was the solution. You know, I'm going to share with you what God did for me, and you know, and, and that was it. But no, that was not the ultimate plan or design for me. And what I've experienced is true. Yes, it did happen. But that wasn't all of it. You understand? The true message that God has given me is the fact that we must fall in love with Jesus. And we must fall in love with Him intimately. You know what I'm saying? Not in the head. Not in your head. But in your heart. I remember the time when I came to Christ. I had it in my head. I was excited about it. I said, oh, I'm going to tell the world. Change the world. Look what God has done for me. He's taken me out of the pits of the marley clay and set me up on a pedestal. And I have a brighter day. That's what I thought my message was. But no, the moment at the beginning, the end of this year, the beginning of this year, when something happened in my mind and my spirit and my soul, and it's just that what was in my head about Jesus and what I thought about him, it traveled all the way down to my heart. You understand? Now he's in my heart. I love Jesus. I you know what I tell people, hey, I love a man. I, I love an awesome man. You understand? The man that I love satisfied me in ways that you would never imagine. No woman could give it to me. You know what I'm saying? That kind of love is what I'm talking about. You know, it's going over, not sexual, you guys. Let's not get into the sexual thing. It had nothing to do with sex. The thing about it is, what is she? I can get to the point where God can give you so much glory in your life that sex can't even, can't even compare. You understand? I'm talking about satisfaction that 
this unmeasurable. You know, you can't even imagine. You can't imagine. You can't explain. You can't explain. But anyway, I don't want to go there because it's so awesome and God has so much. Now, I, I'm encouraging you brothers. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. You understand and you see what's going around uh, in the world today. You know how we were represented, you know, and how most men feel about themselves um, and how, you know, they just downcast and just, it's just, man, my heart goes out to everybody. It is not easy being a man. It's easy being a male. It's easy. You know, you wake up and you have, you know, the private parts, hey, you're a male. It's more difficult to be a man. And it's more than many facets of being a man. You understand? But I found out for me, what makes me a man is my intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, you might think that's strange. But I'm saying, man, I have definition now or could be defined by what Jesus says, how he defines me. You understand what I'm saying? It's not based on anybody else's opinion. It's not based on the, the world system of what a man is. It's not based on Hollywood, Hollywood's interpretation of what a man is. It's not even the interpretation of a pastor or a preacher. You know what I'm saying? Nobody has a final say or can put it all in a box and say, bam, this is what a man is. Ha! Huh. Oh, can you imagine? You know, you're trying to define Jesus. You're trying to define God. Oh, no, no. Leave that in the hands of the one that created the man. You understand? I leave it in the hands of who created me. Every man, we just like a fingerprint. We are so unique in our own being. You understand? We don't need to be walking around being mad at another man because we're based, we're mad at him or envy him or admire him. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't pure. It was not filtered by Jesus, having the mind of Christ, the heart that sold out to the living God. You will never be able to see another brother like he should be seen if you're not looking through the eyes of God. You understand? Each one of you have a gift given to you by Jesus Christ. You have a purpose. And it's up to us, time out, for not being the man that God has called us to be. We are different type of men, going through different type of experiences and responsibilities. But we cannot face any of it, any of it, without the knowledge and the love of Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. You will never, ever be a man without first loving Jesus intimately. Understand, knowing him personally for yourself. Not for anybody else, but for you and God. The Lord Jesus is looking at every man today and asking the question, where are you? Where are you? Where are you, Adam? Now put your name there. Make it personal. Put your name there. Where are you? Every man needs to know right now, today. Where are you? Where are you in Christ? Where are you in marriage if you're married? Where are you in your job? Where are you in the neighborhood store? Where are you when you're in your car? Where are you? You need to know where you are at all times. At all times. When Adam fell in the, in the garden after that relationship that he had with Jesus and he spent time with Jesus and walked with Jesus early in the morning, you understand? And God had given him an assignment and even made for him a helpmate. Brother, where are you? Where are we? It's a body of believers, it's a body of, of men. Where are we? Are we unified? Do we have an intimate relationship with God? Do we seek Him each and every day? Do we spend more time on the game than we do on our faces before the living God? And then you want to ask yourself, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Because you don't have a relationship with Jesus. It's possible you don't. You understand? And when they're talking about it in your head, man, we can all sit here and say, oh, hallelujah, praise God, be up in the church where I sit and looking good, profiling. We can look good, you know, being out. 
looking, looking at us and being the husband, being the man for our fathers and our sons. Come on now. But that is nothing. That is nothing if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm here to say, he has taken my life. I mean, turned it around, y'all. I mean, turned it around. Turned it around in a radical way. And the only thing I have in my heart is the love for Jesus and the love for my brother. Because I'm telling you, my victory in my life right now means nothing. It means absolutely nothing if I can't reach out and pull another brother in. You know what I'm saying? It would all be for nothing. But I praise God that he put that in my heart. And I want the message I'm going to give to you today is have an intimate relationship. Know where you are right now. It's time now for us to be passive and let the things just go by. And, 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 and having a blind eye to the condition of men that are to the left and to the right of us, but front and behind us. When you have been strengthened, you need to strengthen your brother. You need to strengthen your brother. You need to ask your brother, hey brother, why you, why you got your friends down like that? Why are you showing you behind, man? What you need? What you need? You need some loving? You need some loving? You need the right kind of love. You need Jesus in your life. Jesus, you know, people talking about, you know, why are you always speaking Jesus? Because Jesus is the only answer, man. The world can give us all kind of things to focus on that don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. Just temporary. Temporary. We're going to get all involved in something temporary that's not going to make a difference. And if we're not helping somebody else, what is life worth now? What value is it? You know what I'm saying? Even when we get to the point we're talking about even to our seed. You know, do you value your seed? Oh my Jesus. God has been so good. He's been so good in my life. You know, each morning I have a new praise. I have a song in my heart. I got a love in my heart. And it ain't all about me. It ain't about me at all. It's what I can do for his kingdom. How I can serve another brother. How I can ignite hope in his life. You know, and, and the hope I find is in Jesus. The hope I find is in Jesus. The joy that I have is in Jesus. You know, sometimes you can ask me, why, why you praise the way you praise? Why are you all into it when you give glory to God? Why are you that way? Why are you so expressive? <laughs> Do you know what he's done for me? Do you realize the life I live? The path that I was going down? <sighs> if you knew, you would know why I praise the Lord. I glorify Him. And I want to be that light in this dark world. And you know it's getting darker. We can be in the light today. There will be a sunny sky out there. And trust me, darkness is ever so present. It's, it's all around you. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? What are you going to do for your other brother? Your brothers are sitting out there. You know, the world system will say that you're no good. You're this and you're that. You're, you're an addict. You're a womanizer. You're, you, you, you're a woman beater, whatever, all the things that define you. The only definition we need is Jesus. Getting our life right. You are all those things. When you're under the law, the law of the world, the system, you're subject to anything and everything. You know, when it's said in the scripture, you know that the, the pathway is narrow. You know what I'm saying? It's broad. But it's narrow for those that believe. Come on now. Why do you want to live a life that has no life to give? You understand? Oh man, I just want you to hear me. Know where you are. Get that relationship with Jesus. Read this word. This word is valuable to, to you, to your very existence. Be strong in the Lord, in the power and the might that He gives. And He alone, He loves you, man. He loves you and wants you to stand up. Stand up. Be the man that he's called you to be. Understand? And when you have been strengthened, when you have been strengthened after he has prayed for you, and after he has brought you out, now it's time for you to go back into that harvest field and be a part of the kingdom of God and be a laborer for him. The field is plentiful. Oh, but the laborers are all so few. Will you be a laborer today? Will you be willing to lay down your life for the life of someone else? For someone else. Are you willing to be the light that shines bright, that sits on top of a hill which cannot be hidden, which is not hiding and robust? 
but your light is shining so bright that it affects everyone around you. And they don't see you, they see your good works and they will glorify the true living God, the one that you serve, the one that you perfect, confess that you love, that you obey and you trust. Will you do that same thing for your brother? Will you love your brother as you love yourself? And are you loving yourself with the love of Christ? Hmm. That's amazing. Don't you just think about it. Where's God brought you from? What life did you used to live and that he has set you free? He's made a difference in you. Come on, brothers. Let's join the army of the Lord. He's looking for you. He needs you. We all do. We need each other. Remember that. The next time you see a brother. Change the mind. 